Welcome everyone to the Yu-Gi-Oh! King of Jank. This is a tournament held monthly at the best local shop around Kitchen Table Games. Here's how it works. Every player is allotted a $20 main deck and any deck that has ever topped a regional and above or costs more than $20 is banned. Players must stay in archetype and are not allowed to use modern day staples even if they correlate to their deck. At the end of each tournament, the winning player's deck becomes Hall of Famed and cannot be played again until the end of the Jank year. This is the ultimate test of players' deck construction capabilities and skill. Will I be crowned the King of Jank at the end of the year? You'll just have to watch to the end to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! King of Jank. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of King of Jank. It's such an honor to be able to do such an awesome series and I'm so grateful for the locals for allowing us to be able to play such an interesting format. Uh, make sure you check out Kitchen Table. I'll make sure to leave any information I can find on them in the description below. Um, so today I'm actually on one of my most favorite decks that is actually considered bad. Um, it hasn't topped a regionals before and that would be uh, Mayakashi. Funny enough, the fact that Maven's reprinted all of these cards made my deck super cheap, right? So I start with Heijun here and I, I do the Doki combo, right? Pitching Al Ghul Mazra. All of these cards are dirt cheap, but one for one being an insane extender for us, pitching Mazra, making it to where our Doki can come back over and over and do a synchro climb. Um, so we go for the five, the seven, Doki comes back, we go for the nine. Um, and essentially what we're trying to do is um, get all the way up to the 11. Um, I don't know if we open the trap here, but um, this deck has a crazy vanity's emptiness effect. Um, and we are actually able to foolish a lot of different um, important cards. So I believe we go for Banshee here uh, because we want to get Zombie World. Um, and just the fact that we get an extender that can also dump a zombie is absolutely broken. We are locked into Mayakashi's from the extra deck at the moment. Um, but we do end on a board that is, is very deceiving. We have Zombie World. Um, a two monster negate and make attack zero. We have a battle negate and summon itself in the graveyard. We have a quick effect in the graveyard that allows us to either pop a, a non-targeting pop a monster or pop a trap that also triggers our twice per turn um, Mayakashi link, um, which is super interesting. So we go ahead and set one and pass. We are playing one of our good friends, Cliff. Um, we had a really fun match here. Uh, it's just such a refreshing format to be able to play in um especially while tears running rampant in the tcg and and this gives us so many more options and it, it allows me to have so much more fun with deck construction so uh cliff will go ahead and set scales um so i'm thinking if i want to react here to his scales um this is kind of a interesting position i'm in because i'm not really sure his scales do anything for him if he doesn't have any monsters in the extra deck um so we don't really care necessarily because we don't want to load his extra deck um so he can summon it back um so he goes ahead and then he pens two um and they do have an effect on summon and one that triggers uh by uh <laughs> searching and uh i totally forgot he did this uh he set up a uh magnifying glass just because he's playing the sulfa chords um and it, it represents um whose turn it is by based on where the handle is um just an absolutely amazing match so much fun um, if you guys have a chance and you're near the area make sure you come out and check out king of jank um, for our first tournament we didn't have too many people but it was such a great time um, and every single one of my opponents was super super fun to play against um, so he goes ahead and he places one of the sulfur cords face up in this uh, pendulum in the extra deck forgive me and then activates the sulfur cord uh, field spell um, I, I'm not familiar with this deck, but I do think that the field spell has a lot of, um, has a lot of good things for the deck. So we are going to go ahead and chain the link three to pop the field spell. Uh, non-targeting, which is really good, which disables that entire play, um, so if he were to choose to attack here, we could summon out the level five if he destroys our level seven Mayakashi. And we also get a, a battle negate and summon um, because Al Ghul Mazra is in the graveyard. Absolutely insane extender. Makes our board practically unbreakable because they all are just insane floaters that do broken effects. Um, and none of them benefit him uh, like 
like modern day is the five, the five mills from both players decks and obviously we don't get as much advantage as tier wood from that kind of effect um so he does manage to summon uh the one pendulum monster that says if you special summon a monster uh during the turn just immediately destroy it and that's absolutely broken um i am thinking in the end phase because i have some spice that i'm playing um it's not considered a modern day staple but it is a very good card um, and we did have enough room and budget for it so we go ahead and activate compulse to bounce back to hand i do want to note that we are allowed to play any rarity of the cards um, as you see i'm playing all of the secret rare mayakashis which are a little more pricey than the uh than the the ultras that were printed in mavens um but you are allowed to base your deck off of uh the the lowest printing the lowest priced printing so uh, we are just going to go ahead and uh fire all of our mayakashis uh use Doki to loop and then we can go ahead and use um Yukiona, the little Mayakashi, to send Balladroke, which is kind of insane. And then we'll go ahead and attack for game. Alrighty, guys. See you in the next one. Alrighty, guys. Moving on to game two. We are going second here. Our opponent decided to take first using the Sulfur Chords. Um, he has kind of a weird opening hand, and we do have the absolute nuts. Um, our hand does search any Mayakashi we are also I believe able to access the trap which is the real the real kicker of the deck um so he goes ahead and fires the pendulum treasure putting one face up in the uh, uh extra deck and then uses his effect to scale um he did tell me that the cutia that he just summoned uh, was actually part of was a huge part of his budget because that card actually does cost quite a bit of money um and so he goes ahead and adds the the uh, sulfur cord trap, which makes his monsters unaffected. Um, then he's thinking about what he wants to do next. He decides to set two and pass. So he just has a, a guy on board that can become unaffected by other cards once per turn. I start by activating Zombie World uh, just because... Um, we want to get it on the field. Then we go ahead and activate uh, Jack of Bullen pitching Al Ghul Mazara. Activate Mayakashi Return. Return's going to go ahead and search Heijun. Heijun is going to go ahead and summon us out a Daki. And then we can go uh, those two into either the three or the link two. We go for the three, summon back Daki. I choose to skip a few steps. Technically, I have to summon the five, the seven, the nine, and eleven. Uh, Cliff told me that was totally okay if I just sent him to the grave. And then Docky summons herself out. Then we'll go ahead and go the eleven and Docky into the two, into the three. We'll use the threes effect to target the uh, the sulfur cord on field to negate its effects. And then we'll go those two into the broken Mayakashi. And then we'll use her effect to target his monster to negate its effects and make it zero. Um, he realizes that he does have to have a face up sulfur cord in the extra monster zone or in the extra deck face up sulfur cord in the extra deck to resolve his unaffected trap. But he'll choose to try to destroy my uh, Yukiona and I'll protect it by using Al Ghul Mazara, banishing it and then summoning itself. And then I'll use the uh link three to go ahead and summon out the seven and pop a card and then i'll enter battle and swing for game awesome format really enjoying this let's move on to the next match see you guys there Alrighty, guys match number two we are playing again against another one of our good friends this is nick um unfortunately in this match i did brick quite a bit um and i go ahead and have to uh, fire zombie world set a card and pass um, and I do think that Nick just absolutely destroys me here he's on super heavy samurai and he does some craziness um, by doubling the attack of Ben K um, and can just punch over my guy and OTK me which is absolutely crazy um, so I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys watch this um, and I'll sit back for a few um, and hopefully you enjoy
Man, oh man, big Benkei is absolutely broken. Um, I don't know why I chose to go first here as well. Um, it wasn't really my best idea. Uh, and I did kind of open awkwardly again. Um, we do go uh, activate uh, Jackabolin, pitching Balladroke, um, pass, set, well, set three pass. Uh, we do have Draco Utopian Aura set, if you guys just saw that. Um, he goes ahead and specials out one of the uh, Super Heavy Samurais. Um, I do believe the same thing happens in this match, but we do extend our life a little bit. Um, it's just unfortunate that that's why this deck is considered one of the jank decks. Unfortunately, it does have some consistency issues. If you don't see either um, a two card combo or the one card starter, you are in a lot of trouble. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys watch this one as well. I'll speed this one up a little bit. Um, but it was an amazing time regardless. This is our one loss tonight, um, but that is totally okay. See you guys in the next one. Hey guys, moving on to match number three. Wasn't that really cool to see uh, a silly OTK in such a neat format? Um, we're actually playing against another one of our friends, Mason. Um, he is on a very, very funny deck. Um, so we go ahead and normal summon Unizombie, send Heijun, activate Monster Reborn, special summon Heijun, Heijun's effect, summon out Daki. And now we just go ahead and start doing the link climb and then the synchro climb and then we can go ahead and fire the effect of the little yukiona uh dumping a have to figure out what we want to send mizuki then we go ahead and go those into the three the five the seven and the nine to summon the 11 summon back the docky set one or activate my akashi return thinking if i want to keep it on board just because it does give us a free extender um and it also increases the attack of our my akashis 
Uh, but I do choose to send the donkey so that I'm able to draw a card. Um, and then I'll go ahead and set a card and I'll pass. Uh, just explain.